Mr. MJ, stab so full display In the barbershop vibe, hear what we gotta say We keep it gritty Raw thoughts, no disguise In the heat of the moment, truth never lies Full court press, we ain't pulling no punches Hard hitting dialogue, we got them in bunches Late night vibes, yeah we keep it alive This is basketball talk, where the real ones thrive Don't come at us weak, we break the stats down Memphis grit in our veins, wear the crown in this town Full court press, we debate with real finesse Passionate bros, bring the heat, nothing less Every hot take we drop, you know it's in the zone On FIF we stand, our voices won't be overthrown Full court press, we ain't pulling no punches Hard hitting dialogue, we got them in bunches Late night vibes, yeah we keep it alive This is basketball talk, when the real ones drive Weak, we break the stats down Memphis quit in our veins Wear the crown in this town Full court press We debate with real finesse Passionate bros Bring the heat Nothing less Every hot take we drop You know it's in the zone On FIM we stand Our voices won't be overthrown Full court press We ain't pulling no punches Hard hitting dialogue We got them in bunches Late night vibes Yeah we keep it alive the zone where truth takes the lead full court press we plant the roots of the creed where the real ones thrive So I'm kicking with this shit. You know what I'm yeah. But we got them in bunches. No, we got them in bunches. We got them in bunches on real one strive. So step in the zone where truth takes the lead. Full court press, we plant the roots of the creed. Fuck you. And what we do it every day. We got them in bunches. We got them in bunches. We plant the roots of the creed. Back here, Paul Cup Press. We ain't pulling no punches. Hard hitting dialogue. We got them in bunches. Night vibes, yeah, we keep it alive. This is basketball talk, where the real ones thrive. So step in the zone, where truth takes the lead. Full court press, we plant the roots of the creed. Full court press, we ain't pulling no punches. Where the real ones thrive Yo, 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 yo What's going on guys? We are here on FYL's platform And this is the 94 Feet Boys This is Full Court Press Um, Typically, as y'all know, we'll talk about You know, we'll, we'll talk about other things after an intro But and we got some we got some beef to tend to, man. We got some we got some stuff we gotta handle real quick. My man Herm got some shit he gotta handle. And so uh, I wanna before we before we delve into that, I wanna give you guys the opportunity of seeing what exactly it is he's addressing, give him an opportunity to fully see what he's addressing, and then I'll leave it to you to handle it, my brother. All right. Uh, for sure. You know I'm gonna handle my wax. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go ahead and play the video real quick so that all, the, uh, all of us is aware of what happened. This is last night. Or, in fact, they get mad at us because now it's time for me to take some shots and I'm going to Because we make graphs like this. Now, I, I, I've, been, I've been very quiet and I've been, I've been very humbled. Let me say not humbled, but I've actually just been very, just, very, just, just sitting back watching, using my eye test. 
And Mr. Pee Wee Herman has been running his mouth about what goes on here in Goat James Kingdom a little bit too much. He's overzealous about his ability to debate because he thinks that he wins on FYF debates that he is a master debater. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I said it. He thinks he's a master debater. But we all know he's just Pee Wee Herman. So Pee Wee Herman, you need to stop talking about what goes on here in Goat James Kingdom. If you were upset about what happened on a Sunday afternoon, you're more than welcome to show up and hit the link and we can have a conversation. I'm tired of you idiots who think that you could talk about us in any kind of way and nothing's gonna come back in return. You were good. I actually had you in good services. I thought everything was all peaches and cream with you, all sunshine and sunflowers with you. But all of a sudden you got real bold, real brave. And what you don't understand here, Mr. Herman, Mr. Pee Wee Herman, is that here in Goat James Kingdom, we don't run from any debate or any conversation predicated around. So <laughs> I'm going to step back because I ain't got I ain't got no dog in this fight. And I'll leave it to my man, Mr. Herman. Well, you know, I don't duck no smoke. In Goat James Kingdom, I don't have no problem with you now. I just want the smoke. I want I want you and B. Lee at the same time. I'm Debate. It'll be 2 on one That's That's You muffled right now, Herman. You muffled. You muffled. Uh, I'm muffled. How I'm yeah. sounding now. You better. You better. You good now. Look, at the end of the day, uh, hey, Johnny, go James Kingdom. I like what you're doing. You're entertaining. You're cool. But I'm going to put it like this. I want the smoke with you and B. Lee in the debate. It'd be two on one. Stack the deck like your boy LeBron James do. And I'm going to smoke each and every one of y'all at the same time. Easy work. You got Lamont back in. That's cool. I cook his ass too. It could be three on one. I don't give a damn. End of the day, it's a rerun with you every week. All you do is zesty Jeffrey this, zesty Jeffrey that. All you do is talk about the 90s every week. So all you do is a rerun, which is cool. That's what you like to do, reruns. Hollywood Hearn could talk about anything, talk about any sport, could break down anything with some sense, with some logic. Not no hate or logic. I don't have to hate. Now, I, I troll. There's a difference between troll and hate. But the thing is, with me and you, I own you, son. And I own you again. Whether it's on your platform, it doesn't matter. Whatever topic you want to debate, choose it. Just know I want you and B. Lee at the same time. Pause. Two on one, and I will smoke you with ease. I will win a debate with ease, because when it comes to the game of basketball, I just love the game. I hoop. I know the game ins and out. I don't use fanboy logic in anything I do. You do. You a fanboy. I hope you own up to that. End of the day, I'm going to cook you. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to send you back in merry way once again. And guess what you probably going to end up doing? Crying for an hour after I smoke your ass like I did last time. You cry for an hour because I smoke you with a player that I typically really don't even support like that. And Kobe Bryant, I respect him. But I don't support Kobe. I beat you in that debate. I beat you in another one. And it'll be easy. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's going to be a cakewalk. I didn't even prepare. I don't even have to prepare whatever we go have a debate on. Just understand this, AJ. Eh, Don't write checks that your ass can't cash. One thing about Hollywood Hearn, I cash all my damn checks. I cash them all. I want all the smoke. I never duck no smoke. Here's the thing. You don't know which side of Hollywood Hearn is going to come out. You don't know what angle I'm going to come in and any debate we do. Just know, though, if I actually do come prepared this time, you ain't even going to get around. Just understand, I smoked you last time without even going over any notes, without looking up anything. Just know this time, whatever we debate on, just know I'm going to actually come with my A game. You will get destroyed. You will get humbled real quick. And that damn rerun show you do every Friday night and every Sunday, just understand, reruns eventually get cut off too. You ain't Martin. You ain't Fresh Prince of Bella. You ain't Jamie Foxx. Your shit going in, homeboy. And I guarantee you will.
that's all I got to say about that, Casual, man. We're going to get into certain things, man, because we got to pay respects. And we're going to start out paying respects to John Amos, man. Um, he died earlier in the week, man. Had a legendary career. He, Most people know him on good times. The first Hollywood black father, basically. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, hell, it's... Yeah, uh, it's classic, man. He also was on Coming to America, also on Two and a Half Men, on various shows, man. Talented actor. Pray for his family, man. We're going to send our prayers to him. But we got to move on to another great legend. Actually, a legend of basketball. Second in blocks of all time, Matumbo. Shout out to him. Prayers for his family. A great man. Humble man. Gave back to his community, gave back to his country. One of the nicest people to ever meet, actually met him before. But legendary career, and he point blank would tell you himself, I made it to the Hall of Fame off of blocks and rebound. And he was that great of both. Four time defensive player of the year, eight time All Star. Prayers up to Matumbo and his family, y'all. We go. Last but not least, man, Charlie Hustle himself, man, started the big red machine, three-time World Series champ, the all-time hits leader, the MLB history, the only player with 4,000 plus hits in MLB history, man, Pete Rose, man, the man himself. Um, end of the day, he was banned from baseball in 1989 because of off of gambling. Something that, hey. A lot of people believe Michael Jordan was the Pete Rose of basketball, which a lot of people felt. Which it could damn near be true. We don't know. We'll never know. NBA did a hell, hell of a job. But with Pete Rose, he was banned from the game, which was a travesty in my opinion. The MLB ought to be ashamed of themselves. But one of the greatest players to ever lace them up, greatest players to ever hold the bat, one of the greatest hitters of all time. And he got it. He got it. He got the title, man. We gonna play a clip of Charlie Hustle himself, Pete Rose, man. But what we gonna do, man? To the main topic of the show. It ain't gonna be real long, you know what I'm saying? We just wanted to do something because at the end of the day, full core press, we do gotta drop y'all content whenever we can every week and we try to do it for y'all. But the main topic of the show, y'all, I'm gonna give y'all five reasons why LeBron James will never be the GOAT. At the end of the day, it can't be disputed. At the end of the day, all the things I'm gonna say is factual. No fiction. It's all facts, no fiction over here. And I'm gonna start off saying with the number start off with number one of why he would never be the GOAT. 2011 finals. Y'all, I don't give a damn, y'all. I don't give a damn that he came back for 3-1 in 2016 to the Golden State Wars. Y'all gonna say, well, put the exclamation point with the 73 and 9 shit. But that wasn't the KD Warriors. That war, that same Warriors team should have lost to the Houston Rockets a series before. CP3 got hurt. Y'all gotta remember that. They was about to lose to the Rockets. That team had was suspect. 2011, no all-time great that's considered in the top 10. Had, had a meltdown like LeBron James in 2011. Got outplayed by the third best player on the team of Jason Terry. Got clamped up by Jason Kidd. J.J. Barrera in a, in a damn simple zone in which that you could pick which side those small guards was on and take advantage of the matchup, but instead you fold in and had a meltdown. And his biggest excuse was, I wasn't focused. What all-time great player y'all ever known say he's not focused? 
in the tw- in the goddamn NBA Finals. It's the reason why they lost in 2011. The reason why he had the biggest meltdown from any superstar in NBA history in 2011. We never seen such things like that. We understand that sometimes your teams are not just that good. Like in 2007, we understood they won better than the Spurs. We understood he didn't have a damn chance. But end of the day, 2011, the biggest meltdown for any superstar, you can't recover from that. No other superstar has done that. So that's number one reason. Number two, <laughs> man, ATH, man. ATH. Ultimate team hop. Always team hopping, man. Always team hopping. The, the definition about that, let's, let's think about it. When he went to Miami, that when he made a decision, right? But as Miami was breaking down, as Miami was having the issues, and he's seeing D-Wade not being as healthy as he was, he took his ball and ran, and he went to, went back to Cleveland to a rise of star on Calvary Irvin, which was the all-star MVP, all-star game MVP in 2013. Then he was able to get the Cleveland Cavaliers to make a trade to get Kevin Love, one of the rise of stars in the power four position, a guy in Minnesota. That was getting a lot of 30 to 20s, a lot of 20 to 20 games. A guy that was an ultimate double double machine, unstoppable, had a motor like no other when it comes to rebounding and scoring the ball and Kevin Love. So, end of the day, once that started running out, for us because the Warriors, once they added Kevin Durant, it was just too much for Cleveland. And frustrations with Kyrie Irving not wanting to be there at the time because he was young, a little immature. Then, the question marks of Kevin Love becoming content now because he was relegated to a role that he got comfortable in. He wasn't used to being a guy that could be relied upon getting those 20 20s and 30 20s and the ultimate 20 and 10 guy that he once was. He got regulated into being a spot, a spot shooter. So now all of a sudden, you can't expect Kevin Love to be that guy. So after 2018, guess what he did? Ran to Los Angeles. He knew they was going to ultimately get Anthony Davis. He tried to get Anthony Davis his first year in L.A., but we know the Pelicans was a budget. But the next year, after not making the playoffs, and he sat out the rest of the year basically with the hamstring injury, they got Anthony Davis. And you seen the end of the day, everything was going well. They won that title in the bubble. Ever since then, it's been chaos. Ultimately, can't team hop now because the career basically over with. So that's why he's not team hopper, but that's a bad quality to have that you always team hop, but things don't go your way. That's why have, that's a big knock against him. Yeah, number three, under 500, y'all, the NBA Finals. We can't ignore those things, y'all. Yes, we understand certain circumstances, but he had, he went two and two with the big three in Miami. You would think they would have at least won three. He went two or two with them. So ultimately after he left Miami, he was already two and three. Cleveland had a bad luck because Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love was hurt. That was bad luck. I give him an excuse for that. But when the teams were basically even, you got your ass kicked two years in a row by Kevin Durant. I mean, at 2017, they was even. Got your ass kicked by Kevin Durant. 2016, you did ultimately come back from the 3 1. But at the end of the day, 4 and 6 in the finals. Well, come on, y'all. If to be the GOAT, we don't, most of the guys that we consider the greatest of all time is now under 500 in the finals. People don't consider Will as the GOAT, honestly. So, people will say, throw Will in there. A lot of people don't consider him the GOAT. Jerry West, people don't really consider him the GOAT. So, when you look at the most of the all-time great, Larry Bird, 500. Magic Johnson, 500. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, at least over 500. We understand what Mike is, but that's just Mike. We understand what Kobe is. Kobe, 5-2, and two, Duncan. Same thing. But when we look at him, he's under 500. And he had great teams 
that he could have overcame some things and at least been 500. He could have at least been 500. But like I said, 2011, when you do things like that, that ultimately could have made him a 500 player in the finals if he didn't have that meltdown in 2011. So that circles right back around, y'all. What happened in 2011 was circle right back around to the main reason why he's under 500 in the finals. The main reason. Number four, y'all. He never dominated his... Well, yes, build the super teams. Um, I think he was, he was the first guy, honestly, to put it in his own hands to build teams. I don't know if, if we got the clip that he was basically admitting in an interview of how he was recruiting players. How he always been recruiting players ever since 2007. Ever since he snipped the finals. The first time in 2007, he said he'd been recruiting and trying to build teams ever since. He said he didn't. He had promise in Cleveland because nobody wanted to come to Cleveland, so a lot of people turned him down. But once he got to Miami, he said it was easy. It was easy to build the super teams. When he came back to Cleveland the second time, it was easy for him to do it the second time because he built that status. But he made it a trend, honestly, for players to try to build super teams. So that's why he had the Kevin Durant been trying to do what he's been doing ever since ever since he left OKC. He knew he went to Golden State. He built a super team that was damn near unstoppable. Honestly, they would have three-peated if he didn't tear his Achilles. Then in Brooklyn, he did it with Kyrie and James Harden. Then you turn back around. We seen Kevin Durant did it in the Phoenix with Chris Paul, Devin Booker. They re- actually had a big four. So LeBron made it comfortable for God to say, fuck it, why compete? Let's go ahead and build these teams. Before you know it, we might see a Luka Donage and uh, Luka Donage and Nicole Jokic on the same team because of what LeBron James started the trend in. Who cares about let's put it in our own hands to build our own teams to play with the own players that we want to play with. Let's not get it out the mud because Jerry Klaus, Jerry Krause, the GM for the Bulls once said about Michael Jordan. Now one day that he's been in that Bulls uniform that he ever asked Jerry Krause to sign a certain player, to draft a certain player, or influence him to make any moves or any trades because he said, guess what? Michael Jordan was so arrogant enough that he felt like he was he could win with whoever was on his team. He was so cocky and confident that he didn't give a damn who who was on their team. So he never influenced Jerry Krause to make any choice. But LeBron James, we've seen the fire of coaches. We see him influence the front office that you have to make moves like he influenced the Lakers to trade for Russ, which ultimately set the Lakers back due to the fact they wasn't able to get certain guys through the salary cap situation. The new CBA got in the mix of them. Russ had that terrible contract for them. Wasn't a great fit. But it's all due to LeBron James trying to control everything when, when it comes to building his team or any team that he decides to play on. But last but not least, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Never dominated this era. A lot of people would say, well, he went to eight straight finals. Only thing you can say, he dominated the East, but it was nothing in the East. It was nothing in the East. The only team that was worth that you could say he beat in the East was the aging, injured, riddled Boston Celtics. And that was when he was in Miami. But outside of that, Cleveland didn't really have any real rivals when he went back to Cleveland the second time. They didn't really have to go through nobody. The young Boston Celtics with first and second year guys and an Al Horford. Come on. You then had to worry about the Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. Because, hell, you, you left Cleveland by the time that happened. Didn't really have to worry about Giannis because Giannis really didn't come into his own until about 2019. So the Bucks wasn't no true rivalry. So at the end of the day, the Cleveland Cavaliers never had really anybody, well, LeBron James in the stretch from when he went to Miami until he left Cleveland to go to L.A., 
them eight straight finals, there was no true opponent in the East, so he never dominated his era. Only won back-to-back once. That was in Miami. That he won back-to-back. Never dominated. His reigns were spreading out. Only won three in the 2010s. He won one in the beginning of the 2020, and that was in the bubble. So, in all actuality, look at the all-time greats. Ultimately, when people say he's just far better than Bird, he did the same thing Bird did. He won three rings in 10 years. But when it comes to Magic Johnson, won five in 10 years. When it comes to Jordan, six and eight. When it comes to Bill Russell, though, Bill Russell, the ultimate dog, won eight straight championships. Nobody would never do that again. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar won five rings as well in a 10-year stretch. But LeBron, as, as much as he had stacked teams in the help, only got you three. So end of the day, y'all, those my opinions why he never dominated. And Taiwan Gant, you could bring up the age, but guess what? He was a nine-year pro, and he wasn't 25 or 2011. <laughs> he was not 25 or 2011. He was he was basically 27. Because uh, you got to think about, I mean, he was basically 26, I mean. Uh, but end of the day, when you play most of the time with the all-time greats, y'all, that played in this league, when they play about in that eight, when they play by eight years in the league, nine years in the league, they basically start their trend of dominating the league. That's why it's been disappointing for guys like Giannis, uh, due to the fact that the that the trend that Giannis was on, the path that Giannis was on, it was geared towards people thought with the resume that he already made when he won that ring of 2021 that Giannis was gonna challenge a lot of people's legacies. But unfortunately, things happen that he haven't been able to get back to that status that he once had. Because ultimately, when you win your first ring, there's no turning back. But LeBron really never dominated. And that's just the honest guy. Truth is no slight. LeBron is great, y'all. LeBron is great. He's just not the GOAT. And in Taiwan, get every team, every team that, that won doesn't have super teams. Um, the 2004 Detroit Pistons, is that a super team? No. 2004 Pistons were not a super team. Was the Kobe Lakers in 2010, 2009 and 2010 when they won back-to-back was a super team? Hell no. They was not a super team. When it comes to Nikola Jokic, won this championship, was the Nuggets a super team? No. Was Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks a super team? No. So, when we say that every team has won, has a super team, we lying. We lying. Every team that won doesn't have super team. The 1979 Supersonics. When Dennis Johnson was the best player on the team, finals MVP in 1979. That was not a super team. So, I hate when people do that. The bad boy Pistons. When they won that back to back. It was not a super team, even though the 80s had preferably a super team. I lied the Los Angeles Lakers. I lied the Boston Celtics. The Philadelphia 76ers in the early 80s. But outside of that, those were the only two super teams consistently was the Lakers and the Celtics. And the bad boy Pistons was not a super team. So while you guys are emotional trying to defend, that's crazy. And when it comes when it comes down to it, if you value longevity, cool. I understand your whole outlook on the game, and I understand your preference of what you believe is great. You believe when somebody sustain it for a long period of time, that gives them the edge. Cool. But end of the day, if I'm looking at a guy that it took a man 15 years to get six championships. It took a man 15 years to get six finals MVP. It took a man 15 years just to get five, five MVP. Your mic, your mic, your mic. Uh, my mic muff, I probably perfect. away from Perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. From. My bad, it's my good bad. Enough. But, end of the day when you do that, y'all, I'd rather have the guy that, that, 
that accomplished more or less than a guy that been in the league for 22 damn years on the game before. Didn't give me long stretches of dominance. Didn't ran any three peaks. Didn't exert his his greatness to the world to the point where that people fear him. Nobody really never feared LeBron James. As great as he is. Yes, he's the he got he got the record for scoring the most points ever. But they don't put context behind it. That's a longevity thing because he never scored over 2,500 points in the season. He never scored over 3,000 points in the season. And guess what, Taiwan again, when everybody points to Jordan failures, it was early in his career, in the 80s. That 1988, when people say he choked, that was his fourth year in the league. I don't judge LeBron James for 2007. I don't judge LeBron. I don't. But I do judge LeBron around after he made that decision. When he made that, when he made the choice of teaming up with arguably at the time a top two shooting guard in the league. A guy that was already established. As a guy that won a championship, won a finals MVP, D-Wade, Flash, doing his thing. You got one of the top five power forwards in the game of Chris Bosh. You put the attention on yourself. And end of the day, when you finally got there, the first year when y'all got there, you was heavily favored. And you let a simple zone slow you down. And end of the day, if your matchups in the zone when you was on the wings that you had a JJ Barrera or a JC Kid, a 38 year old JC Kid on you, on the island, even though help is waiting, depending upon your move, the help would not have came fast enough. If you was more sure of yourself, if you was more confident in what you was trying to do, you wouldn't even have to worry about the help because you're making your moves so fast, you're so decisive, so decisive with everything you're doing. They would not have stopped you. They wouldn't have been able to put JJ Barrera out there. They would have had to put a whole nother player in the game. They wouldn't have been able to let a Jason Kidd front you in the post the way he did. Push you out of your spots. Making you work like Jason Kidd did, even though, yes, he did have help that was coming to collapse, but it, the help would not have made it fast enough if you was more assertive and more confident in yourself. LeBron James really shortchanged himself. Really settled himself short. But now understand that, bro, if you stay the course, you stay motivated, you get better. Your greatness eventually is going to overcome all the obstacles you're going through. And you and you learning for each situation. I honestly feel LeBron James would ultimately end up winning in Cleveland the first time. But he settled himself short. Cleveland was trying, but LeBron James admitted in an interview himself that I recruited my ass off, but I couldn't get nobody to Cleveland. The organization tried to get players, but they couldn't get it done. Nobody wanted to come to Cleveland, which is understandable. No guy wanted to live in no damn Cleveland, Ohio. And we understand that. And I feel that. So I don't knock I don't knock Cleveland or I don't knock LeBron for realizing damn we might not really get nobody. <sighs> and Taiwan again, here's the thing. Nobody didn't think Scotty Pippen was going Scotty Pippen turned into a Hall of Famer due to the success of the team and due to him getting better each and every year. Scotty Pippen didn't come into the league dominating. He didn't come into the league, hit the ground running. The Bulls didn't really know what they had. So you can say I sound crazy, brother, but end of the day, you just play with what you got and you improve with the teammates that you have on your roster. Don't act like Big Z wasn't an all-star before. 
So and like Mo Williams was an All Star as well on the team. What you gonna say? Well, it's because of LeBron James. Don't act like Booby Gibson in 2007. Then close out the Detroit Pistons game six in Detroit, but Booby Gibson hit that 30 plus point. Now you talk about what caliber Hall of Fame player? If you want to go there, Shaquille O'Neal was a Hall of Fame player that played with him in Cleveland the first go around. Since you being a dumbass, but I ain't trying to be that petty. Pippen was not a Hall of Famer in 1990. <laughs> he wasn't a Hall of Famer when they won their first championship. Scottie Pippen. Wasn't even the two-time All-Star when they won their first championship. So, Taiwan, again, I'm going to put you to the test. I'm going to see, you know, how many All-Star games Scotty Pippen played in when the Bulls won their first championship. Can you answer that, Taiwan, again? And Leslie, I can't knock you for your opinion. I would never knock nobody for their opinion because people see things in a different way. People see basketball in a different lens. So I understand that people go say people go say this player greater, people gonna say that player greater. That's not the issue. The issue is when people disingenuous disrespected the game, period. I would never disrespect professional player to ever play the game because at the end of the day, they did something that none of our ass, that none of our ass did. That some of my ass is on these YouTube streets. We talking shit like we know the game, but we ain't make a far in the game. Far as I made it was college basketball. That's far as I made it. So, in end of the day, I can't be disrespectful to guys I played in the league. None of you guys will smoke a Mo Williams. <laughs> you played a one-on-one. -on -one. None of you guys would have been able to dog a Delonte West one-on-one -on -one at that time. You guys would not be able to deal with a 20-point per game score and Antoine Jameson at the time. So guys be disingenuous a lot when it comes to you speaking on errors, when you trying to talk about competition level. None of you guys I know Terry Porter actually. Um, basically, my daughter's boyfriend played for Terry Porter. Terry Porter, you guys won't be able to smoke no Terry Porter. A forty percent career three point shooter. They had one of the best transitional offenses of all time, but the Portland Trailblazers with him, Clyde, Cliff Robinson. Come on, man. I'm just a student of the game that loves the game of basketball, so I would never disrespect the arrow. I would never do that. But I would disrespect the people that talk of the game, so I'll piss off people that trying to act like they know the game. And Taiwan get that's what I'm trying to say. So, end of the day, when you answer that question about the All-Star thing, that's my point. Nobody didn't think, nobody didn't but know that Scott and Pippa would be the Hall, end up turning into the Hall of Fame and end up becoming. They grew up together basically because I want you to realize the Bulls was a young team in the 80s that was getting their asses whooped by the bad boy Pistons. They got their asses whooped by the Celtics. Got their ass whooped by the Milwaukee Bucks with Paul Pressley and those boys. They grew up together, and guess what? End of the day, they got better each and every year. They learned from their mistakes. They learned from their shortcomings, and guess what? They overcame the odds, and that's when they started dominating. Once they won that first ring, it was no looking back for the Bulls. They grew up together, basically. But I'm not using that as an argument. I'm just saying that when you bring up the Hall of Fame case, nobody didn't know at the time in the 90s, especially in the early 90s and late 80s, that Scottie Pippen would be a Hall of Fame. 
So that logic, when I'm basically saying, can't be used because you don't know who's gonna be a Hall of Fame at the time. Look, look at, look at Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton had a great year for the Milwaukee Bucks when they won their title. Had a great playoff run. Looked like hell. Chris Middleton was gonna be around for a while, but guess what? Shit happened, right? Chris Middleton hasn't been the same since 2021. And casual. And casual knows that. And casual, damn, damn sure know how important Chris Middleton was and how on track he was. Chris Middleton probably could have worked himself later because he had the game. He had the package. But it didn't work out. So we don't know until time evolves. So, end of the day, when people bring up the argument, we're young Hall of Famer. Shit, we went out and known this guy that people would be a Hall of Famer or not. But, y'all, I'm just saying, y'all know. The main point of this stream is really to let Go James King to know that I'm coming for his ass. The main point of this stream is to let it be known that I'm going to make noise on FIF. And I'm gonna let it be known that I'm smoking all them bombs one by one. You're not going to work. So I'm just letting y'all know how it's gonna be. And I'm letting y'all know how it's gonna go. So this really quick video is not even about LeBron James. It's really about Go James Kingdom, about A Johnny, and about B Lee. Because I'm letting y'all know I'm gonna destroy. The LeBron Coat. I'm gonna destroy the LeBron Coat channel. And FIF, hey Lamont, you gonna have to regroup. After I destroy that boy, you're gonna have to regroup. Guess what? You damn near gonna have to sabotage. You damn near gonna have to put some shit in the game just for me to lose. You gotta put yourself in the game. Go ahead, handle your business now to put the fix in. Cause I'm telling you, he gonna need all the help in the world from you. For anybody else supporting me. Cause when I when I go two on one in that debate, I want smoke with A Johnny. I want smoke with B Lee and Hollywood Hearn, part of the 94 feet boys. You lucky my cousin ain't around, lucky you celebrating a party. It is 20th uh, high school year reunion. He's celebrating right now. But I'm telling you now, and he's a LeBron fan, by the way. But when it comes to the game of basketball, we love basketball first before we love the favorite players that we love. And I'm telling you now, it's over. I'm telling you now that you guys go get smoked. And I'm, I'm tired of the, I'm tired of these basic ass dumbass opinions. Y'all try to make excuses and try to shortchange niggas. All I'm giving is facts 2011. We never seen a superstar did that shit what LeBron did in 2011. We never seen a superstar put it in his own hands to create stacked teams. We never seen that. We never seen somebody call somebody the GOAT when they don't even dominate, dominate a decade of the league. So you bring up weak competition, I could do the same thing. Bring up weak competition. Because 2010s, the 2010s era is just as weak as the 90s. They about tit for tech when it comes to errors, when it comes to that decade. The 2010s was one of the weakest decades in NBA history, alongside the 90s. I could bring all that up with facts. Their stats is identical. What they typically done is identical across the board. But I tell you what, it's on. Hey, Johnny, all you got to do is let me know when you want to do this stream. All you got to do is let Lamont know when you want to do this debate. And hey, Johnny, bring your help too. Like I said, I want you and B. Lee at the same time. I got to get ready for work, unfortunately. I just wanted to basically respond to what you said last night. Shout out to my brother Casual for doing this. Next week, y'all, we're going to have a real deal full show. we going to come with it. And I'm telling you, we go cook for real, for real, man. So I appreciate my brother Cash for coming in. Appreciate the chat for jumping right in right fast. But I'm basically responding to, hey, Johnny, you can keep calling me Pee Wee Herman. 
But Pee Wee Herman is that nigga. I am that guy. I'm just saying, you know, I am that guy. And you still my brother. I just gotta whoop your ass. I just gotta go and whoop. I just gotta go and whoop your ass right quick. I just gotta go and whoop your ass right quick. You gotta give you some tough, oh, brother you love, man. But I appreciate hey. you, Cash. I gotta hop on this, hop off this motherfucker, man. I gotta go ahead, go to work yes, and fill sir. in for my crazy ass boss bullshit. But I'm gonna go and get that done for the night, man. But uh, salute to y'all. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all not subscribe to FIL. Subscribe. Support all the shows, y'all. Not just full court press. Not just go James Kingdom. Support the crossover. Support in the zone. And the month actually been coming back with the woodworks lately, man. So y'all check out for his videos because he's been coming out of nowhere. So may I support the movement. But in the, the day, it's a beef within the movement, though, because in the, the day, I got to smoke A. Johnny and B. Lee. That got to get done. And, and, and time <laughs> one day, you'll never hey. cook me. You'll never, <laughs> you'll never cook me because all you're doing is being a fanboy. <laughs> Have LeBron James won the most MVPs and reigns from 2003 to 2020, and, and Jordan went then. Jordan went then 1990 to 1998. Within two years of retirement, done more than LeBron James in, in six years than what LeBron James has done in goddamn 22 years. Jordan in six years then not done more than what LeBron James did in 22 years. That is that okay. <laughs> on, on, that, on that note, <laughs> chat, chat, uh, huge shout out to uh, huge shout out to Taiwan. He, he yeah, Taiwan. He, he, shout out to Taiwan, man. No yeah, personal, bro. Yeah, hard, 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 hard fought battle from comments to to, to panel. Uh, shout out to Leslie. Thank you for tuning in as well. Thank you for all of you guys tuning in, man. This was a impromptu uh, video that uh, Herm wanted to do, but. I'm glad that we was able to get it out there. I'm glad that um, Ajani did what he did Friday, bro. This is great content. So at the end of the day, we're gonna get this money. We're gonna get to the. We're gonna get to this uh, debate, and we're gonna move on about our business. But you guys have a fantastic weekend. Be safe, and we'll holler at you guys later. Peace. Peace. And Taiwan, you right too, man. We know Jordan didn't play for 2003 to 2020, but guess what? Steph Curry got just as many envy. Got just as many uh. Accolades included with the Rangers and LeBron James. So I'm, I'm ending. I'm.